So here we go. We're going to do another experiment. Now that we have six, 60 second exposures, I want to do an experiment comparing one object. I want to do one object for one hour at each of the exposure rates. So the 10, the 20, the 30, and the 60 second exposure rate. And, but I want to do it for one hour each because I want to compare which ones are dropping more and which ones are saving more. And then we can compare the images as well. Um, it'll, of course, the quality of the image is going to depend on how many images save. Um, but that's what we want to do is figure out which of the exposure rates is the most efficient for saving exposures. So that's our plan for tonight. So that is the plan. I want to do M63, which is the Sunflower Galaxy. I chose this object because it does appear fairly quickly and um, accumulates some definition as it saves exposures, but it's not a real common one. You know, it's not one of the go-tos that we always see. And so I wanted to do this so that we could compare it without having preconceived notions about what it should look like and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I do plan on doing an hour each, but because we're changing the exposure time, it's not like I can set it up on a plan and execute a plan because you have to go back out to the settings and change the exposure rate and give it that time to reset the lenses and things for the exposure rate and so you can't do that in a plan in a plan you have to set one exposure rate and then execute a plan and the whole plan executes under that and so i can't do it um in a plan setting i i'm going to do a plan but not a plan in the c star app and so um what i'm going to do you know, now that summer is coming and the nights are getting um, longer in the evening, it's staying light longer. I'm probably going to have to do this one over a couple of nights because I just don't want to stay up all hours of the night doing this. So if I devoted an hour to each one, that's four hours of time and I can't even begin until about 10 p.m. And so I don't really want to be up until 2 a.m plus the time that it takes to change the settings on each one. So I probably will cut it over two nights. I know that kind of interferes with a real scientific experiment, but we're all just doing this for fun anyway. So we're going to do it over a couple nights. Hopefully the clouds will cooperate. It's been pretty cloudy here of late, but I'm hoping we can at least get two done per night and then I'll create the video with the results. So the first one we're gonna do, we're gonna do them in order. I'll do the 10 second exposure rate, and then the 20, then the 30, and then the 60. So that is our plan moving forward. The first image out of the gate, and it's the 10 second exposure rate. I ran it for 60 minutes or one hour of runtime. It saved 43 minutes of total exposure time. So that's a rate of return of 71.67%. So now my plan is I have saved the images. I um, I didn't do a lot of editing. All I did is I darkened the background a little bit because I just think it makes the galaxies look beautiful. And I cropped it and enlarged it. So I didn't do any color changing. I didn't do any enhancing other than the darkening of the background and the cropping. Um, I did do one version of denoise um, in the C-Star app and one that comes straight off of the C-Star. So I will post the, both of those pictures at the end of the video with the others so that we can compare them. But the 10 second exposure rate saved 71.67% of the exposures that it took. And so that's our first one out of the gate. So now we'll, we'll image the others and do the same thing with those. Our 20 second exposure rate is complete. 
uh, we ran for one hour of runtime. It saved 50 minutes of saved exposure time. That's for a re rate of return of 83.33%. So that's better than the 10 second exposure rate. Um, in the next video, um, I will do that tomorrow night or when the clouds allow me to do it. Um, but I will post the images after we have run all four of the options. Next up is the 30 second exposure time. We ran it for one hour of time. It saved 35 minutes of saved exposures. That is 58.33% of the time that it was allotted. So it's not doing as well as the other two um, as far as efficiency of saving exposures. Next, we'll, we'll do the 60 second one. And then after that, I will show the images that it produced. Um, and any of the anomalies that I, I've noticed or anything. And then at the very end, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stack of all of the exposures, and then we'll see what we can get as a final image with, you know, approximately three hours of exposure time once we combine them all. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's what we did on our third leg of this experiment, the 30 second exposures is saving 58.33%. This is the last one. It's the 60 second exposure. We ran it for one hour like all the others. It saved a measly 12 minutes of exposure time. That equates to 0.2% of the exposure time that was available did it capture. And so it was very inefficient to run it at the 60 second exposure rate. Um, I did do the polar alignment on my C star before I set it up and got it as close to zero as I possibly could. And the clouds were gone in the sky. So all I can figure is the 60 second exposure just isn't very efficient. Here's a picture of the images that were captured. This is the 10 second exposure rate at the 71.67% save rate. And the picture on the left is denoised in the C star app. Picture on the right is taken right off of the C star app. I did darken the background and crop it and enlarge it just so that it was visible, but that's the only enhancing that I did on these images that are being shown. Um, the, I'll show them all individually and then I will put them side by side so you can see the differences. Um, they should be in, you know, the quality of the image should be in the rank of the highest percentage of saved exposure rates should be the best picture. So let's, let's check that at the end of the video. And then I think at the very, very end, I'm going to stack all of the exposures that have been saved in the subfolder for this experiment. And then we will combine that image for the last image and it should accumulate all of those exposures and hopefully we get a good end product. But that's what we will keep doing. This is the 20 second exposure rate. It was the most efficient of all of the exposure rates. And that's the same as a, an experiment I did a few weeks ago went before the 60 second one uh, was released in the update. Um, so the 20 second one seems to be the sweet spot for my C star at 83.33% for this image. This was the 30 second exposure rate and it saved at a 58.33%. So this is ranked number three in the experiment that we've done today. Um, the image on the left is the denoised version. The image on the right or in the middle is straight off the C star. And then I wanted to show you a file I got out of the subs folder. This is a FITS file. And I wanted to show you this one because it showed a lot of the elongation of the stars in this exposure rate. The other rates didn't have quite as much of a 
the obvious elongation of the stars as this one did. And there were several in this um, subs folder that saved like this that were just really blurry. I will exclude those when I do the stacking in the deep sky stack. Um, I'll exclude those and any with satellites going through them as well. But I just wanted to show you this because it it showed up on this 30 second exposure rate, but it didn't show up this obvious anyway in the 10 or the 20 second rate. It also didn't show up that obvious in the 60 second rate, which was surprising other than the 60 second rate didn't save as many. Here's the 60 second exposure rate and it saved an abysmal 20% of the time that it was imaging, it only saved 20% as images that could be saved. Um, so I guess it's not all that surprising that it doesn't show the star elongations like it did in the 32nd one because it just didn't save those. And so it excluded a lot and just was not efficient at all. And so if we were going to rank these as far as efficiency of the exposure rate, we would do the 22nd exposure rate was the the most efficient and gathered the most time of the time allotted then the 10 second then the 30 and then the 60 so that would be the order that i would rank them in here are all of the images the ones straight off of the sea star without the denoising these ones were just darkened the background and I cropped them and enlarged them just for the screen purposes. I've included the percentages of save rate, the efficiency rate of the saving of the exposures here for your reference so you can compare them. Uh, you don't see a, a huge amount of difference other than the 60 second one obviously isn't as defined as the others, which makes sense because it just did not save very much at all. And so these are all four of those exposure rates. So again, if I were to rank them as far as efficiency goes, I would do the 20 second exposure rate and then the 10 second, then the 30 and then the 60. So that's the order for that this experiment showed for my C star. I know when I did an experiment before, uh, before the 60 second exposure rate was released, I also did it, the same experiment, but with just the three options and the 22nd was the most efficient then as well. And so I think that's the one that I will opt to use unless for some reason it's it's not doing well. Uh, but the 22nd seems to be the most efficient for me. All right, I've got the Sunflower Galaxy. We're going to stack all of those exposures that we saved in this experiment. And I've started the deep sky stack in the C star app and run it to about 98% because um, nobody wants to sit here and watch that. It, it has taken a little bit of time to stack this, but we're down to the, the last few seconds of that stacking process. But the Sunflower Galaxy um, is it's just a pretty one. Um, let's see, it is 27 million light years from Earth and it's a spiral galaxy, and it's called the Sunflower Galaxy. Now we're 100% stacked. Um, it stacked 519 exposures, and it didn't discard any of those. And it has saved the image in my folder on the C-Star app, but we're gonna check it now. And so this is what we've got. You can see some of that field rotation in there on the left-hand side. Um, I did do this in EQ mode, um, but maybe just all of the different exposure rates let a little bit more in. It, it, it's not really a problem because I'm going to go in here and edit it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm cropping it anyway because I want to make it big. I want to be able to see some of that detail that's in there. I don't want to make it so big that it overlays the whole thing. But now I'm down here in these editing tools and I can darken the background a little to make it pop. You can see quite a bit of detail in this. This is um, 500 and 
can't remember now that I'm recording at 519 or something exposures, but I can add a little bit of color in the C-Star app and that really does help make it define it a little. You can in this um, app go a little too far. See, there I'm going too far. So I wanna back that off to where it, it looks natural still, but it does show some of that definition. You can go into the brightness, you can change that a little bit. You can darken it a little bit. I kind of like it darkened. Uh, let's let's try the color in the more white range. Yeah, that's it does show some definition, but I do like a little bit of that color. Since it's a sunflower, it needs some yellow. Um, that's just a basic editing in the C Star app itself. And I'm gonna click done. And I'm going to actually export it so I can put the photo up on the video. But I will um, show this um, in the at the end of this video. So that is the plan. And this is what we got with all of those exposures of this experiment. We did combine all of those exposures. It didn't matter which... Um, setting the time setting for the exposures we're still able to stack those but you can see quite a bit of detail in in this one with stacking all of them and so you do get some advantages of you can accumulate a lot of time with the higher exposure rates but you also drop a lot so you have to figure out well where is it most efficient and in my experience in this experiment as well as a previous experiment the 20 second exposure rate is the most efficient for me. So if I'm going to spend an hour, I want to get the highest amount of save rate as I can. So that 20% or the 2% save rate is abysmal. It's not even worth setting up the scope to go out and do that. Is it always going to be that way? Maybe not. Uh, might depend on lighting around you or where you're located or the temperature of your scope. Uh, there's other factors that could play in. Uh, but I found the 22nd one is the most efficient and surprisingly, it's even more efficient than the 10 second exposure rate. You would think with 10 seconds, there's a lot less chance of something interfering with that exposure. But I found the 20 works the best for me. Um, but we can stack those, whether this was a 60 second exposure or a 10 second exposure, you can stack those in this deep sky stack in the app. And so we did accumulate quite a bit of exposure time. So you can see the, the bright sun right there in the middle of the galaxy. And it's bringing out quite a bit of detail. I'm just using the editing tools in the C-Star app. You could certainly um, download these onto your computer and do them in Serial or Graxbird or Pixinsights or whatever one um, you're using for post-processing. But for um, my purposes in this experiment, I just wanted to use the C-Star app. And this is the Sunflower Galaxy. Thanks for watching, and I hope the skies have cleared up for everyone else. That It looks beautiful here for the next few days, so I'm going to be doing some other projects and Looking forward to sharing some of those with you. Have a great day and clear skies.